better, better. There we go. There we go. So yeah, I had to turn on the microphone receiver. Makes a big difference. I always forget that it turns off when the computer goes off. And so when the power went out on Thursday, my computer shut off. And so the microphone receiver shut off and the computer has been on today, but I forgot to push the button on the microphone receiver. Now we're in business, so thanks for that. Check on the fish, I suppose. Okay, here we are. How's everybody doing? It's been ages. Um, our power went out on Thursday. So there was no Friday stream because the, there was no power. <gasps> what? <gasps> there is no... What? I didn't realize it was seasonal. Um, let me find some other fish for us to check on, hopefully. The fish will be back next year on March 1st. Um, let me see if I can find more fish. Zone, welcome in. I come to bargain. What, what's your, what are you proposing? What's your bargain? Welcome in. It's good to see you. Let's see. We can do this one. We can check on these fish for now. So is that the Aquarium of the Pacific in California? The fish doorbell, I'll have to remember and take that one out. What a week. What a week. This is not, this is not as interesting to me because this is inside an aquarium, not in the wild. I'm gonna find something better. Mm. We could watch birds, but I wanna give fish since Chaz redeemed check on the fish. Um. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Hold up. What is this? These are all in the US. I don't want ones in the US because that's going to be in the dark. Croatia. Ooh. Let's. Ugh. Offline. Might be difficult. Anyway, back to the bargain. Yes. You you didn't miss anything, Zone, so don't worry. Gibraltar. All of these are offline. Maybe we skip the fish? I'll have to find something else that'll work. Wait, what about this one? That's day one. Okay, but where is it? Above water. K. 
cancel, put my hair up. Okay, maybe I just need to get rid of those redeems. I don't want to take my hair down. It's too warm for that. I thought I looked cute. I guess Zone thinks that I do not look cute with my hair up. It's too damn humid for anything else, honestly. Ocean exploration live stream. Huh. Thanks, Jesse. I appreciate that. Hmm. Keep finding live stream cameras that are promising, and then they're not. Your power grid is still wacky. Like it's not working or what? Here's some fish we can check on. There we go. The Mega Lab. An ocean observatory, live stream camera, and a smart buoy. We monitor ocean temperature and coral reef health in collaboration with Aqualink off the coast of Kona, Hawaii. Well, I hope that this is acceptable. Your power almost went out yesterday. My power went out on Thursday. And there's still some people in town who don't have power. We got very lucky and our power came back at like 6 p.m. on Friday. They said our power wasn't going to be back until noon today. And then it came back on Friday. I was so happy about that. Um, The cause was a... A big storm that we had. There's a huge storm that came through. Um, high score, if you saw in my Instagram story, I posted that picture from my weather app, and there was that curved line that was like coming my way. Um, there's a name for what that formation is. I forget what it is called. Um, but that came through and it was not a derecho. It was, it was a byproduct of the derecho. It was not the derecho itself. Um, anyway, this huge wall of wind came through and there were trees down absolutely everywhere and power lines down everywhere. We got very, very lucky that no, we had no trees or branches down in our yard. We had like a few sticks. We got incredibly lucky because um, pretty much every other yard had branches down, if not in half or entire trees down. And then power lines were down everywhere. It was, it was bad. Gonna take it's gonna take a couple weeks or so maybe three weeks even to get it all cleaned up not everyone can afford a portable generator so that's not always an option nope prof it's not that either uh let me figure it out i'll find out what the word was Oh, that's what it is. Nope, Prof, you're still not getting it. I'm gonna, I'm pulling up the information right now and I'll tell y'all what it was called. Oh, that's a big long document, okay. 
It is called a bow echo. one. Oh, that was in the morning on Thursday. So I'm right here. And that big red line, that big red bow shaped thing came straight through. And then headed southeast. So yeah, this this is what came through. Knocked out all the power, most of the trees, etc. Um, the weather now is actually beautiful. It's really nice. It was like exactly 80 degrees today. Um, I think the next couple days are going to be getting warmer, but like after Wednesday, we can totally open the windows again, and I'm really excited about that. I love having the windows open. Mm. Wait. News Illinois. It did help the smoke from the wildfires, yes. It absolutely did. Here we go. I figured I'd show you all some of the photos. So this storm came through like 1 p.m. on Thursday. And we literally an hour before that at noon, we had a guy come out to look at our roof, walk all over it, take a look so that we can get an estimate for a new roof. And the guy was very nice. But it was literally like an hour after he left. Wait, his our appointment with him was at 12. He left at like 1250. He left at like 1250 and then like 115, this stuff started rolling through. So there's just a lot of trees down. We can go through this quickly. There's just trees down. Absolutely everywhere. Flag pull down. Flag pull down. Nice. Storm clouds. That's part of the the like the wall cloud coming through. Trees down in the yard there. Hello. Okay, computer. Why is it freaking out? Okay, then. There's more wall cloud. <laughs> they caught him on the roof. I feel like he might have come down sooner and been like, eh, it's getting pretty windy up here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come down. Dan kind of said the same thing when all of that wind started coming through. He was like, oh, I hope that guy is not up on a roof somewhere. And I was like, he is a professional. You think that picture is good? Just wait. There's more of that wall cloud. Wall clouds are pretty beautiful. More tree down action. That's just a bunch of brush. More trees down. That's pretty. The clouds over the cornfield and the ominous darkening coming towards you. That sucks. Well, thank you. That's what you don't want. And here it just like ripped it right from the trunk. I saw a lot of that. And yeah, pretty much every street looks like this right now, where there's just shit all over it. And then there's like piles and piles and piles of branches and tree parts along the road. 
but on your roof for some impair. <laughs> How would we get it up to the roof, though? You're onto something. The guy came and like looked at our roof and stuff, and he said he said there was evidence of prior hail damage. And I was like, yeah, I have been saying this since we moved in. I have been saying that this house has hail damage. Because in 20, I think it was summer of 2020, I want to say August of 2020, there was a big hail storm that came through and we got golf ball size hail and everybody got a new roof. Fucking everybody got a new roof. And then we noticed like the leak in this roof and it was like, I think it probably got hail damage and then the lady who lived here, she just didn't get it repaired for some reason. And then the roofing guy said that and I felt very validated. And then um, I think it was Thursday morning, Dan was outside and he talked to the neighbors. It was Friday morning. He was outside and he talked to the neighbors um, and he was telling them like they were talking about, oh, getting a new roof, blah, blah, blah. And the neighbors said, oh, yeah, when she, the, the previous owner, when she was still living there, yeah, everybody got a new roof except her because for whatever reason, her homeowner's insurance did not have hail coverage. I don't know, like, this lady had lived here for at least since the 60s. I don't know what kind of person lives in Illinois and owns a home and does not get hail included in that policy like that's just homeowner insurance 101 i live in illinois jesse where do you live in illinois we have all four seasons sometimes you get all four seasons within a week or even in one day you can get all four seasons always an adventure. The weather never stops being interesting. Oh, there's a big down, down tree there. Whole damn thing. Oh yeah, just timber. Popped it right off. Hi, pillow. I'm glad to see you. How are things? Um, yeah, today it was really nice. It was like 80. It was just super, super nice outside. That's cool. More wall cloud. That's a good picture of it. There's a branch over on their porch. Yeah, that one did look good. This is not the photo set that I saw before. I don't think. So I don't know if it's going to have some of the better pictures. That's not great. That I guess that used to be a really big tree and now it's half of a tree. That's that, yeah. Oh, wow. So this one just took the whole tree over. Right from the roots. I think that's the same one. Oh, well, that sucks. That's on someone's car. Not ideal. Rip that car. Pretty much. Maybe they set it there on purpose because they wanted a new car. That's the same car. Wow. They really did it up right. <laughs> Hi, Crowbar. Welcome in. I mean, the wind part was cool, at least. So another thing about being in the Midwest is that many people like to go outside and watch the storm. <laughs> they like to go outside and watch the storm. 
I always like to welcome the storm in. I don't know, it's just like a thing I like to do, connecting with the nature and all of that stuff. I like to stand out on my back steps and just watch it come in and greet it. And Dan came out and he was standing there with me. And we watched the cloud like come in and like come through the, <laughs> over our yard and like over the house. And as it did that, like it was moving pretty fast. And as it did that, this wall of wind just hit us and it like knocked us back a half step which was certainly a new experience for me. Oh shit. I did not see this picture. Um, that looks like a nice pickup. It looks like a nice old pickup, not a big fucking truck. That's a shame. That is, I'm not entirely sure what building this is. I think it's a building on campus. Oh, we saw so many privacy fences that were just fucked up. I believe, I believe this tree is crooked with surges. People always die and they say, don't go to the beach and don't go to the coast. And then people always go watch. What kind of surge do you mean? <sighs> Not sure quite what that is. That might be parts of a building. There was one building that, there's this building that used to be a gas station and it has that flat roof. And when I was driving by after the storm, it looked like the roof just got kind of peeled up or at least a layer of the roof got kind of peeled up and thrown toward the front. Cause it kind of looked like if you put a tarp over, if you put a tarp over something, then you kind of flip it back. It looks like that. The sea rise and the high wave from storms. Oh, yup. I mean, tidal wave, tsunami 101, you can die very fast. Don't even, don't even, not even once. <laughs> I remember the Boxing Day tsunami when that happened. That was, that was a very big event. It was absolutely catastrophic. Um, the videos from that were people who were up on like higher ground and happened to have a camera and they like people talked about how far back the water receded and they people were standing down by the water because they were like, what is going on? And then those people died because the seawater receded so far back and then so so fast it just slammed in with that wave just awful oh ouch that's a couple different trees that's a fire truck with a lot of water this is not the photo set that I thought it was. There's a different photo set that was way better. I think this is just showing damage rather than storm pictures. Yes, exactly. Tsunamis are so scary because you think it's just a really big wave, but no, no, it is the whole ass ocean pulling back to slam that much harder. Well, there was a better photo set of this. Mm. 
I don't know. I'm not going to dig for it. Sorry. I would like to start working on the thing I was hoping to do tonight, if that's okay. I need to work on that sewing pattern that I started making in the basement. And I need to add, um, I need to add an inch on each side. They're scary and disturbing. Yes, it is always terrible like that. That one was especially so because it affected so many countries. I, uh, I, I probably do need to work on the floor. Do I want to? No. But like back here, back there, you can see like that piece of paper is very big. So it's going to be really difficult to maneuver it on the desk in a reasonable fashion. Also, before I do that, I need to show you all my earrings. I got them today. I went to the plant shop, found a plant I had been wanting. I saw these earrings and I needed to have them because These, no, um, let's see. These earrings are just, they're perfectly on brand for me. Let's see. Look! Oh, he's not gonna focus. Come on. Guess I gotta hold him back here. Anyway. Cat snail. Snail cat. Is there anything more appropriate for me? Can you even imagine? Crowbar, where are you at that you got wind damage? If you have pictures you want to share, that's always welcome. They could not be any more on bread. Exactly. They're perfect. I was very excited when I saw them. Oh, like eight years ago. Oh, that's okay. There's plenty of pictures of the storm here. I just don't want to dig around for them because we have better things to do with our time tonight, or at least I do. But yeah, the, the roofing guy, he looked at our he looked at our roof and was like, yeah, it looks like there's previous hail damage. And what he was saying, he was like, I mean, you could, you could try and file a claim. See if they'll, see if they'll cover it. You never know. This is what he kept saying. And... A friend of mine who works at insurance, she was like, I mean, they're going to ask the date of the hailstorm that caused the damage. So you need to make sure you know what day the last hailstorm was. And then that whole storm came through. And I kind of wonder if we couldn't just say it happened on the 29th of June. You lost your front porch roof and then someone stole it. What? Someone stole the roof of your porch? <clears throat> okay. I c yeah. I think it's gonna have to be the floor. Which is already dirty and I just swept it on Thursday. Okay, let me sweep the floor a tiny bit and then I will put the paper on the floor and crawl around on the floor. I just, I swept my whole office on Thursday. We didn't have power. So I didn't have anything else to be doing. So I took the opportunity to do some cleaning that desperately needed to be done. And I swept my entire office. Like, I moved this chair out of the way. I swept under that desk. I swept under this desk. 
yeah, it, it was crazy. I did all the sweeping in this room. So I'm a little annoyed that there's just so much crap on this floor already. Having the power out was actually really nice. The heat was not my favorite. I did not enjoy like, okay, aside from the sleeping issue, having the power out was great in my opinion. Sleeping sucked. I only got a couple hours of sleep because I just kept waking up because it was too hot on Thursday night. But aside from that, I felt fantastic because I was not anxious whatsoever. I had pretty much zero anxiety. Which was interesting. Because, like, I guess that means, like, technology... Well, we already know that technology makes people very anxious. But yeah, I just wasn't worried because, like, sure, there's all these things I need to do. But if I don't have electricity, I can't do any of those things. And I'm not gonna fret and worry about things I have no control over. Okay. Mm -hmm. You live on an arterial road? You park in the back and use the back door. Okay. Uh... Got a big aluminum awning over the porch. Okay. And it got knocked down. Pulled the rest of it off the house so it wasn't blocking the front door anymore. And then you let it sit in the front yard. Okay. A couple days later, you went out to look at the roof. Oh, because you had a leak in the laundry room and the roof was gone. Entire tracks in the front driveway. Ugh. That sucks. I bet somebody took it for scrap. I probably took it to sell it for scrap. That does suck. Kiki, is it Kiki? Or please tell me how to say your name. Welcome in. Thank you so much. We do enjoy some bright colors here. Jesse, you're fine. I didn't say anything about that. Sarcasm is fine. You just have to like use an em emote to make sure that it conveys that it's sarcasm because otherwise there's no way to know that something is sarcasm when it's just through text. Thank you. That's kind of you to say. <sighs> I situated some light over on this desk here. Um... I need to turn them on so we can go over there. Peanut butter and jelly. Open faced or closed? Huh. Does it count as open faced if you just make it all on one piece of bread and then you fold the bread in half? Does that count as open faced still or does it have to, does the bread have to stay flat? That's still closed though. Okay, well, we'll get the poll going. Uh, I think Christian's getting that taken care of. And we're gonna pop it over here. And then that one. This one. And I need to, oh fuck. I need to plug in the iPad so I have chat. And where is my iPad plugin? That's the question. Shit, what is that? Because it's USB C and I can't plug it in to anything else because I don't have USB C things. What? Mic switched? What do you mean? 
What happened to the microphone? I need to find where that plug went, otherwise I won't have any chat over there. I feel like I need to look in the basement because that's where the iPad was last plugged in. It sounded like it was the camera or the computer mic. Oh, let me check. Thank you. It probably is because when I had that scene set up, um, it, the microphone thing was still off. Switch it. How about now? Sound the way it should be, or is it weird? Oh, is that camera? Oh, and it should be. Oh, I'm good. It still sounds weird, really. doesn't do sound. Um, okay. That's on there. That's the music. Why is the browser audio? Oh, because of that, we can close that tab. Um, okay. Um, fix that one, I fix that one. Like, I am across the room. I am across the room, but like, I shouldn't be this bad. Is it still doing it? I can't see over there, so. Sounds the same. God damn it. Better. I guess I can't use the shit I set up over there because I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, 
Um, Jesse, I don't have enough information. She's your ex, so you've already broken up. If you're too busy and never around, I think being too busy and never around is pretty self-explanatory. So. You put many other things... If you prioritize many other things ahead of that relationship to the point that she doesn't get to see you very much and she feels abandoned, then yeah, that's valid. That's a valid reason to break up with somebody. Being in a relationship generally implies that you're going to spend time together. So. So annoyed about the sound thing. Doesn't make any sense. And I have to figure out how to troubleshoot that when I'm not streaming. That's going to be a pain in the ass. Okay, well. To the floor, I guess. Tried so hard and gone so far, but in the end, doesn't even matter. <laughs> and I can't read the chat because I can't plug in my iPad. What the fuck? Where is that plugin? No further details. I need to go see if that plugin is in the basement. Not happy about it. I don't, I want to say I don't think it is because the, I brought the iPad up. Maybe it is down there. I'm going to go look. I'm gonna go look for that. It should just take a minute or two. Um, I'm gonna throw this on. If you want to join the puzzle, the link is pinned at the top of the chat. We'll be right back in just a couple minutes. Come upstairs. Okay, I'm back. Oh, burr. Cold in the basement. Communication is crucial for any relationship to be successful. Platonic or romantic, even business relationships. If you don't have com good communication, it's not going to work. Yeah, 
Come on. Fiona, I think Fiona is gonna help. Okay, iPad was like very dead because I didn't know where the charger was. So let's give that a moment. Um, yeah, Jesse, it's very difficult to give you any sort of advice since there is a lack of information on your end. But yeah, I think the reason that she gave is pretty self-explanatory. You, I don't know, you could always include her in the things that you're running around doing. But if you're running around doing all this stuff and then just leaving her out of it, then fuck you, basically. Like, that's shitty. <sighs> oh, well, you don't even care. You met another girl today. All right, then. Case closed. <laughs> Why did you want advice on the other one, then? Since, apparently, there's no shortage of women for him. Now I need to update... okay. If anyone else has love, love adjacent stories or questions or wants advice, let me know. Which app? Where did you go in the list? There. <laughs> there are 67 apps that need to be updated. Oops. Okay, that's fine. Let's that. Open this. Okay, super great. Now we've got the chat. Yay! Okay. So, it happens over and over. Okay, so there's a recurring situation where they say you're not available and you're not around. So what can you do to be more available when you are in a relationship? Hi, Scotty, welcome in. Unless... Jesse, unless you, I don't know, I can't tell if you are interested in what I have to say or not. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to go back to this other scene and I want to try and figure out which things, which devices are fucking up. Because I'd really like to use this camera. This is what I set it up for. It was for you. Okay. It seemed as if you were exclusively talking to pillows, so I didn't want to butt in. Um, let's take this off. Take out my shit. I'm the camera over here. And... Oh, maybe that one helps. And 
that down and get rid of it. Hide it. Are we in the shower now? No. No, I'm not in the shower. I'm just figuring out what the audio problem is here. Both of my cameras have been muted. There's no buzzing. Is there an echo? There shouldn't be. There's only one source that is showing activity when I speak. No echo either. Yeah. Chat, how is AI going to affect porn and loneliness in regards to society at large? Let's discuss. All right, let me come over here and I'm going to bring this down a smidge. Because I'll be down here and then I'm going to have the iPad so I can see what's going on. It's going to be here, I guess. Hopefully it doesn't fall. That might be dangerous. Um, and then I have this other camera in case anyone actually wants to see what I'm doing. Okay, is it in focus? However, not really. That's there. This is gonna be interesting because I can't see very well. Okay. I hope this is acceptable. I'm gonna add on, I have to add inches onto this. You can't see it very well because it's in pencil. I'm hoping that it won't take too long. And then if it doesn't take very long, I should be able to potentially cut out some fabric. <gasps> oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Hello. Thank you for the resub. Happy 30 months. I'm gonna need to, to change the colors of the flowers for the multi-year badges. Shit. Welcome, welcome. I'm gonna add... Uh, I don't need two inches on each side. That's 18 inches. I need one inch on each side. I need... Okay, wait. I need an inch and a half because seam allowances. I'm gonna do it separately. So how's it going? How's, how's Josie? I'm gonna always ask now, you know this. The replica thing was weird. What's the replica thing? I need to bring this chair over because I'm not going to be able to see shit. I cannot read chat across from there because the text is just too small. Okay. 
She's laying here beside you. How many belly rubs did she get today? Uh, pillow. So this is the, um, the pattern for the cushions that I'm trying to make for my patio furniture. I need to look this way and not that way. The cushions for my patio furniture. Um, I traced the original cushions. And I'm going to make a trial run version. Just out of plain cheap fabric. Just to make sure I've got the sizing correct. And that I know what I'm doing. And then when that's all good, I'll get the nice fabric and do it the right way. But when I originally traced it, I did not make them big enough. So I'm adding that. Um, I'm adding that on now. I need an extra inch on each side. Plus seam allowances. Not ideal to do it this way, but it's what I've got. So I'm just working with it. It's too big to put it on the desk, so floor it is. Replica is a companion AI. Ugh. As an AI girlfriend, and it had a paid option for erotic chat. Eh, weird. They rolled back the erotic chat and left the paid customers. <laughs> That's wonderful. So it was kind of like that movie She. With Joaquin Phoenix, where he falls in love with theory, basically. That's what I'm. That's what I'm getting from it. There's been several movies like that, though. There's She, Blade Runner. Um, did anybody ever watch that movie, Simone? There was a movie called Simone. It was like an Al Pacino movie. I think I saw it on an airplane. On an airplane once. <laughs> it was like Al Pacino with some film director, and he needed, like, the perfect actress or something. And they invented this. Maybe she was like a, a, she was like a robot of some sort. She was a robot of some sort. And they named her Simone, but the I was a number one because that makes it cool and edgy, and that's how you know it's about technology and that she's a robot. I do not remember what ended up happening in that movie. Probably something where somebody falls in love with her and then the adversity is naturally going to be, oh, well, she's a robot, so good luck with falling in love with her and or she can't really have sex. I haven't seen any of the fall in love with the AI movies. Why not? Don't you enjoy a romance? I like a romance. Those are plenty of good romance movies. Speaking of romance movies, has anybody else seen Steel Magnolias? Because I watched that last night and I didn't realize that I had never seen it.
you haven't nope it's on netflix right now so you know strike while the iron's hot and all go give that a watch because i want to discuss the movie but if nobody's seen it then i got nobody to discuss my movies with It was a 1989 movie, and it's one of those where, like, everyone who's in it is recognizably famous. Some of them were already famous then, and some of them were just budding stars. It's kind of the same vibe as Mystic Pizza, if you like a late 80s, early 90s Julia Roberts movie. And like, who doesn't like a late 80s, early 90s Julia Roberts movie? No, it is nothing similar to Vanilla Sky. I love Vanilla Sky. And apparently I'm like the only person who loves that movie. But no, this movie is nothing like that. Oh, Blade Runner Next Machine. Um, I saw one of the Blade Runner movies. Steel Magnolias is not that genre whatsoever. We can go back to the AI type genre, that's fine. I'll watch pretty much anything Penelope Cruz is in. She's just like, I mean, she's the most beautiful woman on earth, so like... Okay, twist my arm. And it's not even that bad that Tom Cruise is in that movie because he wears a mask for a while. You gotta catch a plane. Scotty, where are you going on vacation? Thanks for stopping in. Bad break. Okay, well, that sucks. I wish there were more fish doorbells, like for salmon or other, you know, other migratory fishes. Maybe they need some help. So, yep, AI romance movies, what about them? Or just like the AI romance thing, are there any other developments in that industry? You didn't hear anything for the ad break. That's okay, Scotty, I didn't say anything for the ad break. I was just wondering where you're going on vacation. Let's put a door in the middle of the Salmon River. More like, let's put a dam in the middle of that river because that's what keeps happening. You're going to Minnesota, you live in Utah. Oh, okay. And I ask what you're gonna be doing in Minnesota. Minnesota is pretty nice. I've never been there in the summer. I've been there one time. I went to Minneapolis, St. Paul once. But I know a bunch of people from Michigan and they're all very nice, so. Clearly that means that state must be pretty nice, right? Ad breaks in Spanish. Mm. Don't know about that. Oh, a lake cabin right on the lake. That's nice. Are you going to do some fishing and some hanging out? 
I have seen those tubes. I have. Um, that makes me want to pull up a video of it. If someone wants me to pull up a video, I can. I'm just about done doing this outer layer, outer line. So it's okay for me to pause for a moment and go do that if, if you want me to. But if nobody says they want me to, then I won't do it. Just looking for people to express their needs. Salmon cannons, hell yeah. Fishing, skiing, kayaking. Ugh, summer skiing, oh goodness. Well, have a great vacation, and we'll see you when you get back. Okay, salmon cannon, let's go. Ooh, the puzzle is looking good. Everybody's going to Spain this year. What's the deal? Um... All right, y'all ready for this? There's something unusual going on at the Cleelum Dam in Washington State. See that long tube along the river, the river over the dam and dam and into the lake? That's a that's a transport transport system by Whoosh Innovation. That gives Whoosh Innovation. Joyride, passable dam, passable dam. Its nickname? Its nickname? The Salmon Cannon. From the fish's From perspective, the fish's this, perspective is this is a, a instantaneous, instantaneous transport, transport over, over a large over barrier that they never could have gone over before. That's right. This right. portable system costing around $10 million, about one-sixth the cost of traditional fish passages, uses a tube filled with air and water mist to safely transport migrating salmon more than a kilometer from the river over the dam wow. into the lake above. So here's where it all begins. The salmon swim upstream against the current, and when they get to this pass, they will naturally swim into the system, and that's where their incredible journey begins. Once inside, the salmon swim through a small waterfall and into a chute, which then takes them inside a scanner mm. that makes sure they're actually a salmon. The scanner sends the information to our sorting computer. What happens if they're not a salmon? Which is this gate. And the gate says, all right, it's either going to the whoosh tube or it's uh, a reject fish. We're not going to talk about that one. And this all happens automatically. All automatically. All yep. Wow. In a span of less than a second. But the That's cool. Wow factor starts when the salmon is shot into the flexible tube like a rocket. I love this. And again, in slow motion. Whoosh. So now I'm at the top of the dam, which is 50 meters high. The salmon travel overhead through the tube at a speed of 45 kilometers per hour. The entire wow. bullet train-like journey, taking less than 60 seconds, ends with a final splash into the lake, where the unscathed salmon swims off to spawn. The Yakima That's amazing. had about 800,000 salmon returning here every year. That was the second largest run uh, attached to the Columbia itself. Um, and by the early 90s, because all of these dams were built without salmon and fish passage, we were down to three to 4,000. The return of salmon in the Pacific Northwest is especially important. Hi, 21. Welcome in. A group of Native American tribes that revere salmon. They built their economy, their religion, everything around the salmon. Why don't they interview people from that tribe? Um, it was Thank you. Them in, in many ways. It looks so weird for me. Does their appearance change after mating? Well, if we can help address those issues of fish passage, which exist in every country, 
China, China South whoosh innovation. South America due to the increases in hydropower um, installations that have been going on over the last number of years, that the technology can spread from here and truly be useful in other places in the world. And the salmon cannon has another use as well, at least for TV comedians. Let me tell you how much I love the salmon cannon. I love it so much. We made our own cannon this week. Let's see wow. where this salmon ends up. Good bombing for you. That's amazing. Joy to both humans and salmon alike. Maylee, CGTN, Cleelum, Washington. That's that's the salmon cannon. If you didn't know, now you know. Ooh, -oo? we say ooh -oo from time to time here. Cleelum, is that somebody we're supposed to know? I have not made it yet, and I also look weird. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like a dream contraption. I had the weirdest dream. They were transporting fish with these big tubes and cannons. Maybe that's how it got invented. Oh, it's a city. Huh. Best stop, west side of the Cascades. Oh, okay. Ignored her submersible warnings. Oh, okay. This is a National Geographic version. Oh, let's watch this one because we're gonna get a first person view. Slam and salmon. Let's go. Best water slide ever. Just for the moment, 21. We were talking about the salmon cannons, so I wanted to show them in case people didn't know about them. The big request. What you playing? Yep, dams are terrible. Wow. The concept that we had of moving fish over dams Often. but not in water actually seemed quite natural to us when you thought about what a fish actually does when they encounter a barrier like a tree that's fallen in the water every day. So yes, they would jump over the tree if it was blocking their way in the river. Huh. and they're leaving the water, and they seem to not be stressed about that at all. And once we convinced ourselves that logically, from a biological standpoint and a physiological standpoint, that this shouldn't be injuring the fish, we said, well, we gotta try this. It, 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 it should work. A company that came up with an idea, imagine that. We're out here today so uh, cool. deploying our system, the fish portal, to see if we can move American shad uh, from down here uh, all the way up there above the dam. We have a bunch of water that we're pumping down and it attracts the fish in. And so as the fish swims in, they will jump over a uh, weir and that's the highest point. And from there, they're sliding down. And this unit is our official recognition system. And what it has is it has a series of cameras that will take photos from different angles. And so from that information, it has about a half of a second to tell our uh, control unit how to move the fish from them, whether it's in uh, lane one or any, uh, any of the other lanes or back into the water. So we're looking at our tube system here, and we have a uh, really low friction misted tube uh, that allows the fish to go from the bottom of the dam all the way up to the top of the dam, depending on the length of the, the dam or the height of the dam uh, in less than about 15 seconds. Fish, uh, when they're handled uh, by humans, will have higher cortisol levels because that's not what they want. Our completely volitional system, completely automated system, doesn't handle the fish at all. And the, there's no trouble, there's no 
uh, ailments that happen to the fish that they wouldn't otherwise receive in the wild for the most part. It's better for the fish because it's safer for them. They're less stressed as they're transported up to the lake. It's better for our customers because if we're able to do this successfully, it's a lower cost solution. And it's better for the environment. We're getting the fish back to where they were before the dams were created. And if all of those things happen, then this would be a great success. On the grand scale of things, when there's so many issues in the world, you know, where do you focus? This seemed like an awfully good one, good place to do it. Save water, save power, save money, and save the fish. Hmm. So now we know. If you didn't know, now you know. It is time for a NOS. I'm, I'm fading. I'm wilting, not fading. I'm I'm wilting, so it's time to perk me up. With the power. No. No, they're not. Um fish fish sticks are not made from salmon either. Fish sticks are made from like tilapia and whatever scraps are on the fish processing floor. Because they're the chicken nuggets of the seafood, no? Okay, we might watch YouTube videos for a minute because the depths of the ocean are a mysterious. What happens when a submarine hits crushed depth? Shrouded in dark. And I wanted, I wanted to, I was wanting to find videos that visually demonstrate what happens when a submarine implodes because it's fascinating, and I just want us all to have that visualization. It's not an environment that many dare to explore. And some streams got missed for reasons, and I didn't get to do it yet. Pushed beyond its normal operating limits. When a submarine reaches its crush depth, the consequences can be catastrophic. Today, we take a look at what occurs when a submarine reaches its crush depth, how such an event can change the course of history for people on board, and what happened to the U.S. Navy submarine USS Thresher. Let's dive in. There are, in fact, two distinct crushing depths the depth at which engineers say it is unsafe to die, and the depth at which a submarine actually crushes. World War II submarines were given a maximum death rating, below their maximum safe crushes at all. Um... The inner hull, or pressure hull, is responsible for keeping the pressure differential between the interior and exterior constant. Pipes and fittings would fail as the submarine got closer to its crush depth. I don't like this one. We're going to Welcome back to my channel where we delve into the intriguing world of failures, demystifying. Yeah, the crushing train cars is a very good example. Bewildering nature. Called Titan has we'll get there. We'll Today, get there. Today I explain the chilling story of the Titan sub and its ill-fated expedition to the Titanic, which has gripped the world's attention like few news stories do. My specially made animations will illustrate what happened. Diving to the wreck of the Titanic is extremely treacherous. It can only be attempted during small weather windows in the year because the conditions need to be perfect. On Sunday, June I like 18th, his animation. at 8 a.m., the sub was launched, beginning its descent into the deep. The journey to the sea floor took approximately two hours, moving at the slow pace of just two kilometers an hour. Wow. The sub so descended that, under its own weight, preserving its propulsion batteries for maneuvering and course correction. The Titanic wreck lies an, at a staggering depth of four kilometers, comparable 12, to the four table mountains feet. in Cape Town. Uh -huh. I saw you, South African. Very distinct accent. Twelve thousand five hundred feet. Large submarines That's like two and a half miles down. depths of 250 meters or 800 feet because the immense pressure becomes too dangerous at what is literally called crush depth. 
They did not descend directly over the wreck to avoid dropping weights or other stuff onto it. Instead, they were a little off to the side. Upon reaching the sea floor, the submersible would drop ballast to achieve neutral buoyancy and would then embark on its mission to locate the wreck. In the pitch darkness of the deep ocean, it took the crew approximately half an hour or more to find it using its powerful lights. There is no GPS underwater. They rely on accurate acoustic system and inertial navigation. Titanic could be very close and still take ages to find. The wreck was approached front on, so the visitors would have this iconic view as their first glimpse of the historic ship. 90 minutes into the dive and about three quarters of the way down, the mother ship received the last message from Titan. Some reports said the sub's final text told they had dropped their weights, implying the need to ascend urgently to deal with an emergency. That would be the last communication received. Did they abort the dive because of a system warning? Or were they hearing ominous noises from the hull? This is a truly terrifying thought. The voyage data recorder should reveal more. Communication was completely lost as the short text message system and positioning pings ceased simultaneously. What followed was an implosion of the passenger compartment, collapsing into a small space in the blink of an eye. Knew it. Yep. The violent collapse was effectively oh, instant, nice. as this demonstration shows. The I love that. Let's see that instant, again. As this demonstration shows. The violent collapse was effectively instant, as this demonstration shows. Amazing. was effectively instant, as this demonstration shows. I could watch this all day. The I pressure vessel consisted Not of even. the mid-body pipe, Let's do the NOS can? and okay. the hemispheres. The center tube was mid-body pipe. I wasn't paying attention when he reconvened. The pressure vessel consisted of the mid-body pipe, end rings, and the hemispheres. The center tube was made of five inch thick carbon fiber and epoxy composite rolled onto a steel pipe. The hemispheres and rings were made of titanium. The rings are glued onto the ends of the carbon fiber. They're really the trusting that glue. The bolted onto the rings. The front dome is pivoted as the door so you can get in and out. When closed, and then weld it shut from the outside. From the outside. A tube is a weaker structural shape than a sphere. So the tube should have been the stronger material, not the unproven one. This choice of material had been questioned by the deep submergence community. But the Ocean Gate CEO dismissed these warnings as getting in the way of innovation. The titanium parts were covered intact. Perhaps the acrylic portal failed, but it seems more likely the mid-body pressure tube of the crew compartment was crushed by the unimaginable pressure. With each dive, the pressure vessel of the sub experienced incremental fatigue with tiny cracks and weaknesses. On dive 24, the accumulated damage was too much and tragically the five occupants died instantly. The composite would have been shattered into fragments. The composite material may have failed in the direction where the fibers were not providing support to the epoxy. The filaments oh, were not providing support to the epoxy. The oh, filaments shit. were rolled in one direction only, not with multi-orientations as is the norm for stability. I would be interested to hear comments from those who know more. Even if the carbon fiber turns out not to be the cause, its use was part of a disturbing attitude of dismissing industry best practices and norms. The sub's pieces sank and settled on the sea floor. After searching more widely for a few days, the search teams looked in the location below the last known position. Very soon, they located 
five major fragments, including both end domes and the landing frame, scattered across two debris fields. The day after the sub disappeared, there was persuasive evidence that pointed to a sudden disaster. The Navy had picked up a violent underwater bang shortly after the simultaneous loss of all communication. It is puzzling why this compelling evidence was not made known while alternate incorrect scenarios swirled unnecessarily. The banging sounds were not And the search that, focused on the wrong place. Ten days after the sub disappeared, the wreckage was brought to shore in Canada. These pieces will be essential for the investigation. They're the literally right hand left, right. Our incredible modern world runs smoothly without us even noticing. We get to enjoy all these amazing benefits without giving them a second thought. It's only when things go wrong that we start to realize how much we take it all for granted. None of this seamless operation would be possible without the unsung heroes, our army of brilliant scientists and engineers, quietly and unseen, making sure everything functions effortlessly. Our reliance on them is undeniable. The ocean does not care if you are rich, but it does favor those we respect engineering and science ahead of hubris and gut feel innovation. If you like this, check out my video on the deeply puzzling Yeti Airlines crash. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, they said like, don't do titanium and carbon fiber. They don't mix. And that guy was like, fuck safety. I hate safety. He illustrates complicated things in a simple manner. I like that. If you're looking for a conspiracy theater, you likely won't enjoy my content. That's wonderful. Let's let's see how his other videos go. Um, 21, you had a video. Are you in our Discord? If you're in our Discord, you can put the video in the live chat there. I'm not going back to more YouTube right now. The Hydraulic Press channel has a video testing how much pressure carbon fiber resists. How much pressure did they find that it takes? Back to the floor. Okay, so I've got the lines made, but I need to connect them. I need to connect the dots. I was wondering, are the quotes just for your enjoyment or is there an archive to see? Um, there's a quote command, or quote or quotes. I forget if there's an S on it or not. Um, it's just a stream elements thing. I wish we had an archive that was like searchable or whatever, but the way that the stream elements bot does it, it is not really searchable. You can type quote and then random numbers, but you can't just go and see them all at once, unfortunately. So mostly just for our enjoyment. It is a way to die, but billionaires engaging in tragedy tourism, going to unsafe depths, and the amount of hubris that played into all of it, they got what they deserved. <laughs> um, there was also uh, something about Jeff Bezos' yacht. Right. Finally, making its debut in the in the water. Um, so I'd like to page some orcas to go take it down.
Yeah, exactly. Anybody let the orcas know? We're waiting. Waiting, wishing, and hoping. No, sitting, wishing, waiting. That, um... That Jack Johnson song. Orc is really doing more than their share. More than, yeah. God, they're amazing. Oh, right. People shutting off, people setting off fireworks in the neighborhood all day. It's that time of year where people just willingly blow their fingers off. They know a couple of orcas. I bet they, um, when Fiona was in here and she was up in the window and some of them went off, she just would like startle a little bit and like look for it out the window. I don't think it bothers her too much. Basil, I'm not sure. Basil doesn't like storms. She doesn't like big storms. Well, she doesn't like them if they're loud. Like the thing on Thursday. She didn't care. But if it's like a big, loud thunderstorm, she doesn't like that. Um, and I recall one, at least one year during the 4th of July, when we were home during fireworks, she did not like that. She doesn't like freak out like dogs do or anything like that, but she, she obviously did not like it. But she's just a little kitty and she a little kitty with big feels. Oh, speaking of Basil. So she went on Friday for the dental procedure, right? That we've had rescheduled like twice. Because she was supposed to go for it and then she had this weird skin thing happening. Um I think the skin issue is dietary. I think she has a sensitivity to something in this dry cat food. Because she was fine, fine, fine. Never had any issues. And then I switched her dry cat food. I switched her dry cat food to this other brand called Taste of the Wild. It's a very good brand of cat food and dog food. Um, so I switched to that because it was less expensive but still good quality. And she started having these skin sores after that, at some point after we switched. Dan and I were talking about it like last week and we were kind of walking through a timeline of the cat's food trying to think about it. And we're pretty sure that that's what happened. Because since I switched her to the hypoallergenic food, she's doing a lot better and her sores were all healing and stuff. Um, yeah. So I think that's what it is. Because it's not the wet food that we had been giving her because both Fiona and Basil used to have that wet food a few years ago. We order it from Chewy and then we had stopped ordering it and we were trying this other food. And then we went back on it. So it wasn't that food. And then, yeah, the only food that had changed was the dry kibbles. So I'm giving that bag of cat food to the neighbor for their cat to use it. And yeah. Um, she's on, the vet gave her this hypoallergenic food. It's like pills, prescription, something or other, but it's for um, skin issues and food sensitivities. It's really fucking expensive. I gotta start, I don't know, I feel like maybe I need to start asking them how much things are before I just say sure. 
because it's a like like this big this bag of kibbles and it was 70 fucking dollars it was 70 fucking dollars and that's ridiculous and they were like yeah have her on this for a couple of months but i don't know if we're gonna need to do it for two months we'll see It would be cheaper to feed her beef. Correct. Correct. It's just absurd. Um, so I've been giving her that food for the last, at least the last couple weeks, I think. Because um, I took her back to the vet, I want to say, last Friday. Like, not two days ago, but like the week before that. I had taken her to the vet because... She was going to have this dental thing soon, and I started noticing those small sores coming back. Like, they seemed like they had gone away. We treated them, and she got the steroids and everything. And then I started noticing little ones coming back, so I took her in, and we were, we look, like, the vet looked at it, and we talked about it, and we both were leaning towards food sensitivities. So that's why they gave her that special food. Um, yeah, so she went for her dental. Yes, um, wait, let's do a prediction. Let me set up a prediction real quick first. One moment. Hello, camera. Oh, that camera froze. Neat. Super. Super duper. One second. Refresh. Come on, camera. Don't be a piece of shit. Cool. Super great. Love that. Love that. Oh, there we go. Do love that. Okay, great. I have two of the same model Logitech cameras plugged in, so my computer is probably pretty pissed. <laughs> okay. How long should the time be for the prediction? Should we make it a quick five minutes? Should we let it be a full ten minutes? What do we think on that? God, Nas is so good. It doesn't even taste like energy drinks because all the other energy drinks taste like sugar and make your teeth hurt and they're just terrible. Full 10 more votes. Fair enough. All right. 10 minutes. You have a prediction at the top of your chat. How many teeth did Basil get extracted during her procedure on Friday? Place your bets. Have fun with it. You could win a lot of points. This is not the time to be conservative. Mm -hmm. Six fifty one. What you want is this? Four fifty one. Okay. 
Well, crowbar, tell it in the tell it in the prediction. Tell it in the prediction. Don't tell it in the chat. So the top of your chat, if you don't see it, refresh. There is a pinned comment with the puzzle link, so make sure to click on it. Click on the banner if you don't see the prediction. If all you see is join me for tonight's puzzle, click on that. And it should say view all too. And you click view all. Like over here. View all. And it shows you both of them. <laughs> okay. Okay, so from the available options, can you pick one? Pick pick a number from the available ones and go with that. You did. Okay. All right. Excellent. Have fun with it. Don't be afraid to bet a lot of points. We've had people go all in and it does pay off. It do it do. Mm. If it was an option, you were gonna say five because that's how many your son had to have removed on Thursday. Oh, Jesus, why? Why did they pull five teeth from this human child? I'm not betting a lot, pillow. Have fun with it. No one has any idea except for me. That's what makes it fun. Is just the guessing in the dark. Yeah, they weren't coming out on their own. Still, though, I feel like that's no reason to just yank them. Like, all in due time, all the adult teeth are coming through. Well, won't the adult teeth just shove the baby teeth out of the way? Ugh. Ugh. Book snail. Hi. Hi, snail friend. Oh, so nice to see you. Yeah, how old's your son? He came through the baby teeth. What does that look like? He's 11. Oh, the poor kid. Book snail, what's going on? Um, Book snail, I need to show you my earrings I got today. You're going to love them. My fellow snail comrade here. Here, have them. They're little kitty cat snails. And this camera's not going to focus on them. They're a little kitty cats now. Oh my gosh. Come up in the most bloody face. Oh god. <gasps> no. That is nightmare. No. Ninja, welcome in. There's already one over there. Let's do it on this side. Um, new arrivals, get your bets in on our prediction. My little cat Basil had a dental procedure on Friday. And I want y'all to place your bets and make a guess about how many teeth they took from her mouth. From the thumbnail. Thank you. I do pride myself on having good eyebrows. I feel very lucky that I have multiple friends who are estheticians, and so they taught me about makeup. And I don't, I don't know a lot, but what I do know is good. Stay for the good vibes and snails. Yeah, exactly. Pristine. 
Nice. How in the fuck is it July already and already the second? Like, when did this happen? Halfway through the summer, I still have to work. Well, that's unfortunate. Almost 200, yeah. It's taken a while. I wish I knew when we started the quotes, because that wasn't a day one thing. I don't even think that was a year one thing. Get your votes in. Have fun with it. Don't be afraid to bet your points. There's more where those came from. Okay, September 2021, or not September, just 2021 at some point. Okay. Sounds about right. If you know about dropping the meat, then you know. If you don't know about dropping the meat, well, stick around, you'll find out. Don't remind me that it's July already. Why, what, what are you, what are you not looking forward to? It is a pretty good first quote. It's very telling. I'm gonna sit back on the floor as we finish the prediction. I'm working on drafting a sewing pattern, so. Hmm. Hmm? Still Pride Year. I mean, every month is Pride Month. Book Snail, thank you so much for the biddies. I appreciate you. Every month is Pride Month. And just connecting dots, lines, I guess. My birthday is soon. It's, um, wait. Two weeks away? Shit. I think my birthday is in two weeks. I, I need to make a plan. I don't know what we're doing. Women's will be here, though. So that'll be fun. I was thinking of making my birthday like... I don't know. I like to do a streamathon type thing just because it's ridiculous. We'll see about that, but it might involve installing shelves in my closet. Um, I have my birthday, July 17th, and then I have the day I was born. But no one celebrated jack shit in regards to me in the month of February this year, so I'm not counting that. Would have been nice, but no. You know, somebody's birthday, all they really want is to be recognized and celebrated. It means we just hit June 30th. And the other child is just a bit older. What? Why, Crowbar, is that your birthday or someone, one of your child's birthdays or something? Well, 
Let me know when the prediction time is up. Because I might not see it down here. Unless it already went. No, I just, I can't see it because it's on the other, it's on the puzzle message on my screen. Oh, the time is up. Well, thank you. Because it was close to Valentine's Day and we celebrated last year. Yes, I know, Prof. I was there for all of those things. Oh, the 17th is your wedding anniversary. Lovely. How many years? I'll get up in just a moment. Get this outline completed, which is like six inches more, and I'll get up again. Prof, I feel like you're going to be dissatisfied anytime I have a birthday at this point. Like, I don't know. I can't. I can't figure it out. Okay. I mean, 19 years. Holy shit. Artistic people are the best, depending on the circumstances. We're very useful to have around. Okay. Who's ready for the outcome of the prediction? It'll be interesting. Who's ready? Anybody? There you go, pillow. There we go. Give us that enthusiasm. Okay. Here we go. Whoever has chosen the correct outcome will be awarded 20,810 brownie points. Here we go. The magic number is six. They took six teeth from a precious baby kitty. And Christian is now so much richer and flush with even more points than he already had. <laughs> that is so many teeth. That is so many teeth. Should we do another prediction about how many teeth she has left? Because that's a, that's a number too. It's also a number. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Let's do it. Um, All she can have is Zoom. Okay, here's a five minute prediction. You have five minutes now to predict how many teeth Basil has left. At the top of your chat, if you don't see it, refresh. All you see is a notice about a puzzle and Christian getting points. Just click on that and click view all. And now I can't get rid of that. There we go. Um. What is she eating? Well, right now she's just getting wet food because she just had that procedure done on Friday. 
So they said, like, give her wet food for a while because I'm sure her mouth is, if not sore, it's still very tender. You best believe I'm going to give her all the, all the kibbles because I had that whole bag of kibbles that was 70 fucking dollars and I'm not letting that go to waste. Jesse, don't say it in the chat. Vote in the, vote in the prediction. Dead Chrome, hi, welcome in. Nice to see you. We are taking a prediction about how many teeth Basil has left after her dental procedure where they extracted six teeth from her little mouth. So get your prediction in. It's just a quick five minute thing. I think there's about four minutes left. Don't be shy. Place your bet. I still love your hair. Well, thank you. I, I'm a fan of it as well. Very humid, though. It, it lives up here in the summer. It's too hot to not do that. Um... I have fine hair, so my hair is fine, but there's a lot of it. Um, so I, I wouldn't call it thick hair, no. It's fine, but it's just, there's a lot of it. Um, no, no, I don't feel that way personally. I don't, like, literally shaved, no, because I don't think that is the look for me. But sometimes, sure, it would be nice to have something to do with my hair in the summer, but that's what hair clips are for, and I just clip it up out of the way. I could eat the leftover kibble. Mm, you got jokes. Um, it's not what other people think. It's what I think. I don't desire. I do not desire to have a shaved head. I don't think that is my best look. Couple more minutes to make your predictions. Dead girl, make your prediction. Get in there. Jesse, you too. Let's go back to the floor. To the window, to the floor. Oh my god. <gasps> Somebody made like a, a remake. A cover? It's a cover because it's music. Somebody made a cover of of that song. Of Lil John's from the Okay, what is the actual name of that song? It's not from the window to the wall. Get low? I think it's get low, right? Yes, it is. Somebody made a cover of that song and it's like slowed down and like jazzy. It's an abomination. <laughs> oh, it was I I heard it like in a TikTok or something and I was my brain was like wait wait a second what I know this what is this? Oh, and I, I don't know. It could be Richard Cheese. I do enjoy some Richard Cheese, but I don't think this was that. I think it was serious. Yeah, he does live music covers. I am familiar with Mr. Cheese. I enjoy his musical stylings. I don't think this was that, though. I really don't. Now I gotta make a new seam allowance. Oh, not an inch. I need a half inch. Shit. What the fuck? Guess I got graphite all over my hands. Neat. Yeah, he also did Gin and Juicy. Yeah, he's done a lot of different covers. I just don't think this one was him. Try and find out. But I'm skeptical.
did the prediction end? It always ends like as soon as I get up. I should, I should work on that. No, it was not an AI cover. I know what I'm talking. You just gotta, just be patient. Okay. Prediction outcome. Wow. Let's look. Let's take a look at this. So most people, I guess four people thought, four people think Basil has 15 teeth left in her little mouth. Two people think she's got nine teeth left. One person is certain that she has 12 teeth left. And says one person, oh, one person spent 100 points at five teeth. Let's reveal, let's reveal the truth. Viewers who have chosen the correct outcome will be awarded 42,080 brownie points. And um, there you have it. There you have it. Um, nobody thought this would happen. Um, but poor little baby Basil has two teeth. Two teeth left in her, her little mouth. Poor little kitty. All the points into the ether. Yeah, and I, I, I sincerely hoped it wasn't that low either, but here we are. Here we are. The other time that she's had dental extractions done, it was like two or three teeth. Two or three, that's reasonable. Two or three. And this time, they decided that they needed to take six of them, which leaves her with two. She has like one of these, like the incisor pointy ones she has like one of these i forget which one it is um and then they i think they've said she has a premolar i i have to look she hasn't yawned when i've been around so i haven't been able to look exactly um pillow that's hard to determine how do you determine that with a cat I mean, yesterday she was still, she came home yesterday, and so she slept a lot because she had been through it. So today she has also been resting, but she's been running around the house more, which is really nice. Nice to see, because when she's running around, that tells me that she's feeling more like herself. Uh, pillow, none of those. None of those. She seems just like herself. Um, she always wants, like, she'll headbutt your hands to get pets. She still does that. Um, we've just been making a point. We've just been making a point to not pet her here. Like, cat, cats love, you know, little jaw, little jaw action. Pets there. So we have been purposely not doing that with her because I'm sure it's tender. Like, cats have feelings too, so I'm just imagining if I had that done, I would be miserable for at least a week. So, I, you know, I'll just be patient with her and assume that it doesn't feel very good. And like, I don't, I don't know how they do it. I don't know, like... Does she have little incisions in her, or not incisions, does she have little like stitches in her mouth? Did they just take the teeth out and just leave it there because the mouth heals the quickest? Like, I don't know. 
animals are so incredibly adaptive. It's amazing. Caroline has three legs and you act like nothing happened. What happened to her leg? Do you know? Okay, I need to get this graphite off of my fingers before I like get it on my face. <gasps> she has bone cancer. Oh no. What leg did she lose? That's so sad, but better to lose a leg than have plenty of life left than to keep that leg and die. Left hind leg. That's not so bad, right? That's not so bad. Okay, I need a quick restroom break. I will be right, right back. Carry on with our conversation amongst yourselves. Feel free to jump in the puzzle. I will be right, right back.
I have returned. Y'all are about to be done with this puzzle. I think this was a really good puzzle choice. Just to, you know, humble brag here. And I think it was a good choice. Gratuitous feet. <laughs> Do people on Twitch make a big deal about people showing their feet on t on t stream at, because of like a joke? Like clearly when people are clearly not being sexual with their feet. I don't know. I get that people are like, oh, feet because it's a joke. But it, why is it a joke? Is it like making fun of foot fetishes or something? Or like, what's the deal? Exactly, pillow, just like that. Oh, my contact lens is trying to stick in one place, and I really wish it wouldn't. She can run, pivot, and play in ways that seem impossible. How long ago did she lose her leg? I have some friends who, they have this little dog. Her name is Marge. This dog has such a human face, and she has such a resting bitch face. It's amazing. Um, and earlier this year, she lost her front, one of her front legs, I don't recall exactly which one, but she lost one of her front legs, and so it's been interesting to watch that journey of her learning how to maneuver in this, in this different body. Because I've seen, you know, three-legged dogs before. But it's totally different to watch them learn how to maneuver initially afterward. In about two years. Ah, oh, so she's had time to adjust. That's good. Does anybody else follow or used to follow? Um, there was a cat called Mercury. I think I followed like their Facebook page at one point. Or something but it was this cute little ginger kitty and he was missing his front arms his front legs and I think maybe he had like the part of the first joint of his front legs um and I forget what happened I want to say I want to say they were like crushed or whatever, or just horrifically damaged when the cat was found and he was like a kitten. And then the two front legs got amputated. And this little kitty has just been living his best life. Getting around just on two back legs like a fucking champ. I have not checked in with Mercury in quite a while so I hope he's still doing great ant on the floor fucking ants some of you may remember we were having like terrible problems with ants in our kitchen and I put out a couple different types of ant traps, ant bait, etc. And they went away. I'm going to say they went away for like a good three weeks. And it was wonderful. And then today, out of nowhere, they came back full force. And they just were fucking everywhere in the kitchen. And every time either of us walked into the kitchen, we'd just murder like... At least like 50, 100 ants. Cannot wait to get a new roof. 
if she walks slow, it's sort of peg leggy. An L shaped tile hall, and she'll sprint full speed down and turn the corner, no problem. That's so great. Oh, they're so good. They're the worst. High score, don't you be rooting for them. Don't you dare. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, when when women's comes back to visit. She's coming here on Thursday, actually, but we won't be streaming then. Um, but when she comes she's coming back, I want to say on the 19th or 20th for like another four days of awesomeness. I think we're gonna road trip to the Chicago area and we're gonna go to the the container store. I think that's gonna be like the birthday outing. <laughs> Um, and then we'll probably come back and have a closet building stream. It's kind of what I'm envisioning. And then we can make that into the streamathon situation. That is a pretty quick adaptation. But that's the thing, like, animals are so resilient. We have to borrow her mom's car. Women's mother drives a Mercury Grand Marquis. And if you know about those cars, you know. It's a fucking land yacht. It'll be a good time, though. It'll be fun. I haven't been in one of those cars in a while. So that'll be a good time. Because Dan's car, like, it's having, it has that engine issue, so we're not supposed to drive it out of town. So, those cars are boats. Yes, exactly. Land yacht. There's the fucking boat. It's great. Fucking great. It's going to be fun. My family used to have an Oldsmobile Tornado. Another boat of a car. Such a good time. And you know what? Those boats of a fucking car, like, yeah, they suck for gas, but like, in this era of these giant fucking trucks, which are fucking killing us, I'd rather be in one of those fucking land yachts that has, a, that maybe stands a chance against one of those fucking murder machines. Considering vehicles are only crash tested against vehicles in the same class. Which is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Speaking of crashing and giant fucking trucks, which are killing us. So at the end of July, we're, Dan and I are going to Texas for my cousin's wedding. Some of you know this. Um, and I've started planning our trip. And a couple of days ago, we realized that we're going to have to take my car. Because, again, Dan's car is having this issue. We can't, we don't want to drive it out of town. Definitely not on a long road trip like that. Um, so we're going to take my car. I love my car. My car is fun to drive. But my car is a little bitty car. It's a little space car. It has two seats. It has... It, it has a lot more storage space than it looks like it does, but it's still a little car. And my brain is kind of assuming that in Texas, everybody drives giant fucking trucks. And I'm terrified that we're going to die because I'll be in my small little hybrid car. And I feel like maybe those are not so common in Texas. <laughs> I have not been to Texas as an adult, so... I am anxious about that. Depends on where in Texas. Um, do you have a Ford or a sedan? What kind of car do you drive, Prof? Well, let's have a make and model. 
So if anyone wants to look up my car, I drive a Honda CRZ. C for Charlie or like Richard Z for Zebra. And it's purple. Texan cars are going to bully yours. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. And if it rains, watch the fuck out because nobody knows how to drive in the rain. A Chevy Malibu. Is it a newer one? What year? I spent a lot of time in a Chevy Malibu, but it was like an older, older, like late 90s or early 2000s model. Because my bestie through high school and my early 20s, she had a Chevy Malibu. We have many, many good memories in that car. You know what I realize? I should move that camera over to the chair so you can actually see, like, what I'm doing. Make sure you have AC more than anything else. I do have AC and it works well. Sounds like a racing car. Um, it does have a sweet, like, um, I want to say like a sweet turbo. It's not called turbo. It has a sport mode. So most of the time I keep it in like eco mode. And then you can have normal mode. And then there's a sport mode. And you can really like press that and zip fast. Um, we will be in Austin. We'll be in Austin. We might go to Houston, actually. I, I was thinking about this today, and I proposed this idea to Dan. My cousin is getting married in the Austin area, and we're going make, to make a getaway of it because we have not been on any sort of vacation in four years. We we're both incredibly burned out, and we just desperately need it. We just really haven't traveled except for going to Pennsylvania earlier this year. Aside from that, I haven't traveled in like four years. Um, so we're going to make a thing of it. I'm excited. Um, and Dan said before, he said he wanted to get, he wanted to see the ocean this year. It's been a while since he's seen the ocean. So, you know, that's reasonable. If I do that, you can see it. Is it in focus, though? I feel like that might be in focus. It is not. Yeah, the Space Center, that was something I was thinking about. Correct. We, well, near a lake, I mean, there's some, there's a lake, maybe two. There, okay, there's a couple lakes in town. Sure. Um, I don't know how to make this thing focus. I can go way in. That looks better, but it's not. Mm, it's weird to me that there's people that have, don't see the ocean in years. There's people who have never seen the ocean. There's plenty of people who have never, ever seen the ocean. And that, that's what's really wild to me. That makes it darker. We want it to be lighter. I'm not sure how to make it actually look at that. It just gets more and more blurry. I guess this is not, not the usage for this camera, like. 
near far. I have it on far. I don't know. I would like to share that experience with someone being there the first time they see it. I wonder what that's like. Yeah, Galveston. Um, we were, I was looking at Galveston and there was some other area near there that was like less of a tourist trap. Saw the Puget Sound, but then you were 34 before you saw it. Wow. That's amazing. We're about to be done with this puzzle. Okay, well, I can't make it happy, so I think that's as good as it's going to get. I saw the ocean at a very young age, so yeah, I have no idea what that's like. We did it. It's done. One sec. We'll check it out. Sorry, that's blurry as fuck. This camera is not ideal for this. Ta da! It's so pretty. I really enjoy this Lisa Frank Lion. The Endless Horizon, isn't it? Something else. A container ship, and it was tiny. You realize how far away that was, right? You have miles and miles of visibility. The world is amazing. Swimming in the ocean. That's the other thing, like... I've seen the ocean many, many times, not recently, but I've seen the ocean many times. Dan and I are both very partial to the Pacific Ocean. Um, and so we're both very partial to the Pacific Ocean. And I was like, I know you want to see the ocean. Our only opportunity to do it is going to be when we're in Texas. And he was like, but that's the Gulf of Mexico. That doesn't count as ocean. <laughs> Which, like, I mean, I get that. I, 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 I kind of agree with that. But, like, technically it is ocean. Technically it is ocean. So, we might have to just do the best we can with what we've got access to. But I don't, I don't like swimming in the ocean. Grew up on a tropical island. I've been to the ocean and the beach a bunch of times, but I don't like swimming in the ocean. She can see real lakes and rivers here. Blue instead of brown. Where does your sister live most of the time? Your friend that lives in the in Finland. He complains that the Baltic Sea doesn't look like ocean. Well, the Baltic Sea is not an ocean. It's a sea, right? Okay, yes. So the Baltic Sea, it's up in here, up in here, and it barely, barely connects to the ocean. This stuff is the ocean. But when it comes in here, and it's just in between these land masses, then it becomes a sea. And then it gets all closed off because it goes through these little channels in Denmark. And Sweden, 
And then that's it. Like, yeah, that... I would... I'm with your friend. I don't think I'd consider that the ocean. It's just not the same. The salty lake, exactly. Oh, in Houston suburb. Before she moved here to meet your brother. Where is up here? What state are you in, Crowbar? Yeah. Hi, Undead. Welcome in. A gulf might as well go to the pool. Exactly. I strongly prefer swimming in a pool to the ocean. If you're not swimming a thousand miles off the coast, it doesn't count as ocean. I mean, I'm not going that far. Oh, Spokane. Nice. Nice. Yes, that is technically correct, Undead. You've come in three quarters of the way through it, so. Um, yeah. I... I'm with you that I don't cons I wouldn't consider Baltic Sea part of the ocean, and I also I will side with the Gulf of Mexico also not being part of the ocean, but it's also a place I haven't been, so might as well go check it out. Is the space is the NASA space thing in Houston? Is it really cool? Oh, right, tidy one thing. Shit, I saw it and I glazed over. Chat. Wake up. Time to tidy one thing. We need, like, a jingle for that. Um, it's a group activity about the accountability. So here's how it works. We get up off our butts and we pick something up that is either out of place or needs to be thrown away. And we put it back where it belongs, or we throw away the trash, whatever you gotta do, we tidy one thing to be just a little bit better, then you come back and tell chat what you did. Yes, all large cities can have bad traffic. Now it says south of Houston, is it? I will tidy one thing in just a second. That's like the mission control. Oh, I think it's this one, the space center. Oh, okay. That's that's fine. Because if we're going here or there was some other place down there, but um, yeah, that's fine. Um, I just want to make sure it's worth it to go to Houston instead of staying in Austin. All right, tidy one thing. What's it going to be for me? What needs to be put away? I tidied a lot recently in here. I'm going to put away this bag of knitting stuff. It doesn't need to be sitting out. Putting it away on the shelf here. And now that's done. Um, well, that's the thing, High Score. I don't know what sightseeing things there are. I don't know what kind of sightseeing stuff there is in Austin or in Houston. I have no idea. I've never looked into it until this week when I started planning our trip. <clears throat> um, oh, yes, right here. Putting in the seam allowance. A triple A tour book. No, I don't. I've been looking, like, I found some list that was, like, 25 things to do in Austin, and I haven't, I still haven't gone through the whole list. I started looking through it, and I, oh, there was this one place, what was it called? Uh, Wonder Spaces? Does that sound right? 
it looked really cool. Um, so we put that on our list, but I haven't had a chance to dig in further. Maybe we could have a planning stream. We've done fantasy vacations before. It wouldn't be new. Also, make sure you're tidying one thing and letting us know what it is. You washed your mug in a knife. Good job. Um, you have a download, but you're not sure to get it to me. Um, you can email it to snowpeep at gmail.com. I've been to Texas once and will never be back. Why not? Depending on what part. The rules are all awkward. Too much development. Oh, I'm sure. It's not exclusive to those, those are problems not exclusive to Texas, I promise you. I just, are there things you know of that are fun to do besides the Space Center? I just want to make sure it's worth it to go there because I know there's cool stuff in Austin that we would like. I just got to find what they are. Um, eraser. I have an eraser. And I was cleaning out that box the other week. Here it is. And I dropped it, so that's one drop. You disagree, you don't think the traffic in Houston is crazy? It's not my jam. Okay. Exactly, all states have, have issues. All big cities have traffic. Like, it's just the way it works. I'm erasing the previous seam allowance to avoid confusing my future self. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of this line too. A lot of erasing happening. I'm gonna have to just sweep this, sweep up the eraser shavings. <laughs> Stupid ad. I'm sorry about your ad. Zona, I appreciate your insights about Texas thing. All good. And we don't all have to agree. Maybe Prop thinks it's fine, and Zone thinks it's really annoying, and that's okay. Some people get road rage, and some people don't. We are all different and that's what makes humanity great for the most part I guess it's cheap. Okay, according to you, in what year though? That all dep that's very dependent on year and location. I think that's a bit bold to declare that the whole state of Texas is cheap because I guarantee you that is not the case. 
especially in the Austin area. Part of me wants to go see the space stuff and the ocean for a minute because that'd be nice. But then part of me wants to say it's really our first time traveling in like four years. Maybe we should keep it super simple. I remember one person me telling me they moved from up north because it was cheaper here. That could be. Oh, we're not staying in a hotel, but that's okay. I will take a look at it. I'll take a look. Thanks for sending that over. Yes, Colorado is very expensive. I am familiar with that. Midwest is nice because it is a lot cheaper. Like Peoria, Illinois is like the most affordable mid-sized city in the country. And a lady I know, she has become like TikTok famous, I guess, for recruiting people to move to Peoria, especially like BIPOC LGBTQIA people. Um, she's not a realtor and no one's paying her to like recruit these people. She just likes houses. And so she like makes TikToks that are like, hey, look at this really cute, super affordable house in this very affordable mid sized city. And she's recruited like almost, I want to say she's up to almost 500 people that she's recruited to move there in the last few years. And that's pretty amazing because that's going to be turning elections and shit, which is fucking awesome. Yes, California is stupidly expensive. It's disgusting. She was in like, she got interviewed on, I want to say like the CBS Evening News. She was recently in the New York Times. Like the last few months, she's been getting very high profile interviews. Sixteen inch seam allowance. Four zipper panel. Well, not seam allowance, but 16 inch opening. Okay. Move that down. So many eraser shavings. You were on the local news once. Yeah. Yeah, I've been, I've, I have done the local news a few times. Not my favorite. It was kind of cool once when I got interviewed. I got interviewed for roller derby once. That was interesting. Been on the radio a few times too. Sometimes I think I wouldn't mind working in radio a little bit and it would be really easy to get into it because there's there's at least two community radio stations here where people can just like have their own radio show. What size is Midside City? Um, I don't know. Less than 500,000, more than 100,000. 
Oh no, it was a Valentine's love thing to your now ex-fiance. Oh dear. Zone, maybe she can afford it, or maybe she can't, and predatory lending is happening. Who knows? I think I need this to be over here. I want to play more of that bridge game. It was a good time. Fiora has a population of 115k people. Okay, what about Champaign-Urbana? What does the, how many people does the internet say? Because I'm really never sure, and it fluctuates a lot because of the university. Mm -hmm. yeah, close enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this line. I should not sit like that. Ow. That's not getting good for my hip. Ow. 222,000. That's what I I thought I knew I mean, bleh. I knew it was more than Peoria, but I wasn't sure how much. So, that sounds about right. Erase that, then rewrite it. I might lay down on the ground. Ow. I'm probably going to rip. This is not so comfortable. There's a microphone in my hip. Okay. Oh, this is not going to work. 16 inch. Seam allowance. Or. Zipper area. Okay, great. That was 13 years ago. Well, maybe things are different, so I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, let's, let's segue into something else, shall we? Who's got something? I don't think complaining about this or that about cities is really the best use of our time. Um, you can't redeem it. I definitely did not disable it. 
Um, let me check, or Christian could check. Let's see. <laughs> Cheers, chat. It's paused. Yeah, that's weird. Can you unpause it or do I have to do that? You can, okay. Okay, I will leave those. Um, is it still disabled? You might have to refresh. Should be unpaused. All right. Prof, how did, how did you know that I bought a new plant today? How did you know? I know exactly what plant I'll show you because I got a new plant today, but like, how did you know that I got a new plant today? Somebody's a stalker. Oh, I did say that. I did say that. I just wasn't sure how closely you were paying attention. Because I figured if you were going to redeem it, it would have been back then. All right, I will go get a plant. <clears throat> I'll be back in a, in a jiff. It's just down here in the dining room. I need to do something to prop it up in its container, but I'll get to that later. Um, shit. So, this will be interesting because my up here camera is disabled right now because I do not have enough USB ports or USB extension cords to to run the cameras back there at the same time as the cameras over here very frustrating so we will do the best we can with what we got okay so the plant i got today is a variegated african violet so here's what she looks like This is called, this variety of African violet is called Romance. Look at those leaves though, isn't she gorgeous? And they start out really like pink purple in the center. Then they get lighter as they get bigger and up more. Find it. Yeah, you can see like underneath, some of them are really purpley. And it's going to have purple flowers. Like royal purple flowers. So African violet leaves have a bit of a like fuzzy texture. Not a lot, but just enough that they're just a little bit fuzzy. Well, re this is not a regular African violet. Let me go get, I'm going to go get the regular African violet so you can see a side by side comparison which will give you a greater appreciation. One moment. This is like a twofer. Okay. I don't like to do freebies, right? So y'all owe me 
something. I don't know. So this is a regular African violet. Just the nice green leaves. They don't even get very purple. Just a nice regular African violet. This one really needs to be repotted, but I have a lot of plants that I need to repot, but that's a problem for another time. <laughs> So this is your regular African violet that you see in the grocery store. Your grandma probably had some, etc. Right. And then you have this romance variety, which has these gorgeous variegated leaves. the The flowers look the flowers are the same style of flower, but they're a different color on this plant. They're going to be like a rich royal purple. And I, I have grown African violets since I was a kid. My grandma taught me, my grandma bought me one of these at the grocery store when I was in like fourth grade. And she taught me how to take care of it. And that's how I got a very green thumb. That was my first introduction to taking care of plants. And it didn't, it, it blew up from there. So at the plant shop, he got these in, he got these in a few weeks ago, but I just hadn't gotten around to going back to get them. Um, and then he marked, then he marked them down. So I got this one for 30% off. So instead of $8, it was like $6, which is really nice. So yes, this is the, <clears throat> no, the pot did not come with it. This is a vintage Hager pottery. I've had this for a long time. I just decided to put this, put it in this pot because I felt like it really makes the white on the leaves kind of pop a bit. And this pot is just some very old broken pottery that's been glued back together that I literally got off someone's curb. I like broken pottery that's glued back together for under to use. I like to use that kind of pottery under plants. I don't know why. I just really enjoy it. So looking at these. Yeah, like. Let's try that. Um, yeah. That one has a ton of variegated leaves. Oh, and that one has speckled flowers. Oh shit. Okay, that's not what I have. Hmm. So these are like violet, violet, mine. That it had like some very old blooms on it and they were like rotting off and I picked them off when I got the plant home. But the blooms are gonna be like a royal purple. Kinda like kinda like this color maybe. Or this color. Probably closer to this color. But again, the leaves have that nice coloring. <gasps> Crochet pattern. What? That's so cute. I want to make crochet plants so badly because they're so fucking cute. Like this one. Look at that. Look how precious. Oh my goodness. Too cute. I figured just doing variegated would get us better results here. This closer. Yeah, mine will look something like this when it blooms because these flowers are solid colored.
There's several different varieties of African violets. I did not know about this one. I didn't know about the variegated one. I learned about that one when the guy got them in at the plant shop. That's gorgeous. That's not a succulent. Oh, there's a subreddit for pink plants. How fun. Join. It is a rare case when the leaves are prettier than the flowers. And honestly, on these, I think that might be the case. Um, oh, when I was at the plant store, I found another plant that I want. I am not one of, I am not a plant person that just wants all the plants to have all the plants. I'm actually pretty picky. Um, and I've been, I've gotten rid of a few plants recently because they no longer bring me joy. But I will show you this one that I want. I really want a Philodendron White Knight. Look at this. Uh, regular one. Look. Look how beautiful. Isn't it gorgeous? I love the dark green and then that white just. Oh, good. It's like the pink princess that I have, except it's green and white instead of pink and white. And at the plant store, they are about $40. So one day, I will get them eventually. I gotta find room for it. I'll find room for it and then I'll get one. They're just, like, I had seen pictures of them and I was like, oh yeah, those are pretty. And then I saw them in person at the plant shop. I didn't really see had any. Saw them in person and I was like, oh yes. Oh, yes, that's very nice. This one is a good example. What is, what is that? White princess versus white knight? The fuck is the difference? I swear people just come up with different names for the same shit. White wizard? Come on. These all look like the same plant to me. How about you? There's a difference. It's all in the stem. Right, right. Philodendron white knight, okay. Brownish purple stems. Either way, it's not green, okay. It's a more rounded leaf shape. Yes, it is a climber. Most philodendrons are climbers, if you let them. Look at that. Even the stem is pretty. Philodendron white princess, allegedly. I guess that does have a lot greener stem. Okay. Okay, maybe they're not full of shit. <laughs> maybe they're not full of shit. Because this one, it is kind of burgundy, pinkish, purplish looking. Brownish purple. This one is pretty green. Okay, okay, okay. The white princess has a bright green stem, yes. Edged with pink and sometimes also white on the caterpillar throughout the stem. Also a climber, stays more compact. Its variegation is mostly white, but every now and then it could surprise you with a patch of pink. It has a more splashy constellation thing, but doesn't, yeah, that doesn't mean that. It does have a more painted look. It has a more painted look, whereas, well, okay, this white knight does also look quite painted, so never mind. White wizard, come on. Completely green stem. Asian white or stripes on the stem. What? 
largest and rounded, most rounded, with splashy variegation only rarely. Okay. Especially since all she has is a tiny baby plant. Um, I'm a little skeptical on that one. Oh, that's a mature white wizard. Okay. Note the green stem, it can be completely green or green and white. But the the white princess also had a green stem, so which is it? Weird. Anyway. Anyway. What's that? Oh, so this, okay, so this is that... What? Wow. Thanks, ads. So I guess this is the white princess because it has the green and white. But low, low there is a splash of pink. Okay. All right. Well, now we have learned something new. That's pretty. I like that. Moving on. Um, I guess I'll take these back downstairs. Yeah. We'll be back in a flash. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Show Us a Plant. Okay, probably back to the floor. Probably back to the floor unless anybody needs me to do anything else up here. Happy that I managed to rehome two plants recently. I got rid of a, I got rid of a gray wing begonia. I got rid of another begonia before that one. And then I got rid of, tomorrow someone is picking up my very large Calancho tomentosa succulent. Because I have like three of those. And this one is too big and is not bringing me any joy. So it's got to go. Okay. Um, where is eraser? Okay. Um, the plant I wanted to put in the glass thing. What glass thing? Oh, do you mean the big glass planter that's over here on the floor? I That one I have not, because the plant that I wanted to put in that is my Monstera, like the big Monstera Deliciosa. And honestly, I'm considering getting rid of that plant and just getting a different one that's also small. Because um, it's going to be a bit, I think, before that plant is big enough for that pot but my issue with okay so my issue with that plant really is that the stem is way too long and so I'm gonna need to like trim it down which means it's gonna need to grow new roots which is just a pain in the butt and that's just gonna be a pain I might do it. I'm also tempted to just get a small monstera that is fuller than mine is currently. 
also people have like big boners for the variegated monstera and like yeah they are pretty like it would be cool to get like a leaf of one and like grow a plant from it but i don't know i haven't decided yet what i'm gonna do what kind of fruits are you growing zone Your favorite fruit is peppers? What kind of peppers? I have a lot of peppers in my garden right now. Gosh, I have the first ripe tomatoes! There's two. I haven't picked them. I'm gonna check, like, tomorrow. I'm gonna give it another day or two, and then I will harvest the first ripe tomato of the year. It's a, like, super sweet 100, just a little, like, cherry tomato. But it's the first one! Ah, uh, tape measure, where did you go? Actually, I'm going to sweep up these eraser shavings. Eventually, eventually I do want to have a big monstera or something for like our front living room. Because that'll look really nice. Part of the issue is Fiona. Because she will always get into plants and then she pukes because, well, most of them are not cat safe. And the Monstera is, of course, one of those that is not cat safe. So, like, I can't put a plant in a big floor planter unless, unless the leaves go tall enough where even hanging over they're, I need them to be too tall for her to reach. And so if it's a floor planter, that becomes more difficult. Habaneros, bananas. Go with Fevers and Carolina Reapers. Yeah, that sounds cool. Um, what would a tomato gardening stream consist of? Because gardening, like, I'm past the point of, like, spending long hours in the garden. It's more like 15 to 30 minutes here and there. I try to check on them every day or two. So I don't know what would, I don't know what that gardening stream would consist of exactly. What is Gaiava? Chaoti? Chaoti? What is that? Olives. Coffee. Maya grapes. Avocados. Cucumbers. Mangoes. Potatoes, etc. Those all sound great. Guava is a fruit, but guayava, guayava, I don't know that that's the same thing as guava. Let's find out and see what, see what he says. Um, what the fuck? I need this to be 20 inches, not 21. It's 21 and a half inches. How in the fuck did I do that? How did I do that? I added an inch on each side, which was supposed to make it 20 inches because it was 18 inches. 
and now it's 21 and a half. Take off three quarters of an inch on each side. Guava in the Tabasco Scorpio sauce. Why? That seems kind of pointless. How many, how long is between these two marks? Okay, what in the fuck? This is, this is, apparently I can't measure. Oh, because that's a different line, right. Okay, so from that edge to this edge was 21 and a half. So I took off three quarters of an inch on each side. Oh, because I didn't. Okay, never mind. I know what I'm. I know what I'm doing. I think. I think. Tasty, but also hot. I see. Like a tour and showing off all the fruit. That still wouldn't take the whole stream time, though. I do want to have a stream where I re to repot plants because I do that outside on the patio table. I want to do that. The thing is that that has to be done in the daytime. And I usually stream at night. So I would have to make it a special daytime thing. And as far as I understand, my usual audience is not, is not a daytime audience because, well, you all hang out at night. So, like, I can do that, but I don't have the lighting set up to light my patio light enough for streaming at night. And, oh, God, the bugs that would bring. It's just easier said than done, Pillow. I really, really want to. But it's easier said than done. Oh, that's how you say guam in Spanish. Okay, okay. Avocado. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you for explaining them. Quad, welcome in. Hello, hello. Okay, so seems like I gotta take off some. I gotta take off um some base some amount of this. Because first it was not wide enough, then it was too wide. This is frustrating. Right. So that's the amount on that edge, but then on this edge, it is different. It's not the same amount on each edge. What the fuck? I don't want to make these cushions, but I have to do it because it's just not realistic the other way. I need your feedback on this. Okay, so what's your question? Hmm. Okay, so how the fuck am I doing? How wide is it? Uh. 
Oh, neat. It's also too wide. Because as far as I understood, it was 20 by 30. And this is like 32 and a quarter. Do I just have no idea what I'm doing? But like, how can it be wrong? Because I traced around the actual cushion. I traced around the actual cushion, so what the fuck? I think I'm gonna leave the long ways. I'm gonna leave the long ways, and then I know that the width, or the depth, I guess, I know I needed to redo that because I measured the actual seat on the glider and it's 20 inches deep. So I have to redo that. Largest fruit fly in your whole life. Well, if you want to get rid of fruit flies, get some apple cider vinegar, cut the top off of like a, a small soda bottle, and then invert it back down, and then put like an inch of apple cider vinegar in the bottom and leave that out on your counter, and you will catch all the fucking fruit flies. Guaranteed. Why is it doing this? That's 20 inches. I feel like I just need to I need to bring it in, but like, it's also frustrating because this type of stuff is difficult for my brain to, to think through. Mm. If anything, I will take in this edge back here because that edge has that curve and I don't want to mess with that. Um, that's the back. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Now back to the front. It needs to be 20 inches. And then I need to have a seam off. Because then I get foam that's one inch bigger than the covering. And I jam that in there. I just am so sick of this already. Um, okay, so if I take 20 inches from this edge, this existing edge, I just, I've erased so much already. I don't want it. I do not want. That's 20 inches. And that's like an inch and a something. I feel like it's gonna be one of those things where like none of the lines actually line up. Like if I come over here a few more inches and I do 20 inches, that's right here. And then if I measure it, like, okay, I guess those are level, I guess. Fine. Okay, fine, those make sense. 
Measuring is hard. I'm going to do it that way, actually, so that I know that it's 20 inches instead of going off of the negative count. That's probably smarter. Okay, but then 20 inches from that side is definitely lower because it's on a curve. Let's see. Yeah, that is not level whatsoever. Why? Why is it like this? Am I just horribly inconsistent? Or what? Hooked on phonics work for all of us? What the f Wow, that was like almost exactly a year ago. I have no idea what the ref what the context was. Spanish has an elective. If it <laughs> is it an elective or a required? You can't be elective but also a required. She had a lot of friction with her Spanish teacher because her Spanish teacher was a non-native speaker. Okay, that's the prop that's the first problem. You do not have a non-native speaker teaching the language, first of all. Native speaker telling her that she knows more Spanish and speaks better Spanish than her. Because according to the teacher, she went to college for what? So oh, you're losing me. A native speaker telling her, oh, your sister is a native Spanish speaker. You got to provide all the information and connect the dots because we don't know your life. Your sister is a native Spanish speaker. And she told the teacher that she knows more Spanish and speaks better than the teacher. What? Zone, I don't understand your message. There's too many hers. I don't know which her is. I don't know which her is being referred to in any given thing. I don't know. I don't understand what the teacher did because I don't follow your message. I know you type slowly. Just please read back before you send the message and make sure it makes sense to somebody who doesn't know the situation. Ow. But like point blank period, a non-English language needs to be taught by a native speaker at the end. I really wish I had like some kind of way to just trace the actual glider bench. Paper doesn't bend that way to do the curved corners. So I'm not sure how to do it and I can't do it on my own. I'd have to get help. So like hopefully Dan would be in a good mood so he'll help me. This just fucking sucks. I have all, I have the ideas and then I do them and I think it's all going to go smoothly, which that's my first problem. Nothing ever goes smoothly for me. And then like I try and try and try and then like there's these problems and I don't even know where these problems came from. I thought I was doing it right and then it's even more frustrating because I feel like I've just wasted all this time. Latin American Spanish. I heard a lot of people complaining that they've been told they're wrong by teachers, but it's because the teacher learned a very neutral academic Spanish. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. I can see that. Yeah, the teacher, especially if they're fucking white non-native speakers, yeah, they learned textbook Spanish. They didn't learn Spanish. <laughs> they learned textbook Spanish. 
teacher told your sister that she, the teacher, knows better Spanish than my sister, despite your sister being a native speaker. Well, the teacher doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about. And if she's full of shit and shouldn't be teaching Spanish, Spanish, then she's not a native speaker. The end. I need, like, a straight edge. Where is my ruler? <sighs> now I'm just frustrated and I want to, like, get high and play the bridge game. Heck, heck this pattern drawing. Heck it to heck. Oh, wait, I have a better utensil for this. Duh, I have a quilting ruler. Brr. Okay, that's on the one. Where is this? That's there. And so at, well, I don't actually know if that is the center. It looks like the center. At. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That one is close, but it's not exactly on that line. I don't fucking know. I'm just fucking making lines at this point based on who fucking knows what. I feel like that makes more sense. Ow. I just don't want to do it this way. And I I don't want to do it this way. It's hard for me to think through. And then I get extremely frustrated and upset because I need help. And I don't have anyone I can ask for help. Because, yeah. There's nobody I can ask for help. Because they either don't know shit about sewing. Or they don't live here. Yes, the teacher was in the wrong. Exactly. Mm -hmm. mm. I just want to trace the fucking thing because that would probably be the easiest way to do it. Tracing the cushions is fine, except that my measurements keep changing and not making any sense. So, this is already comply with the teacher just to pass, despite, right, despite the blood boiling. And if you add to the fact that she doesn't like white people, I don't, I'm, it's a, it's a hun hundreds of years long story. I, I get it. get it that's super shitty i'm sorry that happened to your sister oh, i think i'm gonna give up on this for right now i'm frustrated and not happy
Okay. I'm going to put it up on the desk. Because the cats absolutely will mess with it. Oh, I never turned the music back on. Let me do that. There was some lady uh, saved in my phone here. Let me find it. There was some lady who pulled a Rachel Dolly's though. I might have closed the tab though. I have so many tabs open, it's not even funny. It's probably at least a hundred. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Let me pull it up on here. Oh, indeed. Um, May 5th. There we go. This shit. This lady pulled a Rachel Dolezal. UC Berkeley scholar apologizes for wrongly claiming to be Native American her whole life. Whole life in quotes. I'm not sure why yet. She claimed she was Native American for her entire life, revealed she is white, apologizing for breaking the trust of the Native communities she lived alongside. We have heard this story before. She was an associate professor in the Environmental Science and Policy Management Department. What was the reason? The reason for what? She said she incorrectly identified herself based on Incomplete information. Right, right. In uncritically living an identity based on family stories without seeking out a documented connection to these communities, I caused harm. She published books and articles about Native American food sovereignty and other issues but she never had proper documentation to confirm or dispute her claims of being Native American. Oh, what was she trying to gain? I don't know. I don't know if she was trying to gain something or it says, it. so far it says she maybe she had always been told that or maybe, yeah, or maybe it was a, I might be 1 1 16th Cherokee or whatever the fuck, because I know when I was growing up, kids would say this shit all day long. And much of the time, they're just full of shit. Because it was like a cool thing. Um, growing up, I did not question who I was or how I identified. But as an adult, as an academic, I should have done my due diligence to confirm that my ancestors were who I was told they were. But yes, she did benefit from it. Identifying... By identifying as Native American, she had access to resources she wouldn't have if she only identified as a white person. And that's, like, that's one of the reasons that it's very not okay. Credibility with writing books? Maybe. Before taking part in programs or funding opportunities that are identity-related, 
were geared towards underrepresented groups, I should have ensured that I was claimed in return by the communities I was claiming. Yeah, you should. At most, right, like, do you really think that's something worth, do you really think that's worth claiming? That just means, like, somebody maybe down the pipeline. I don't know. Welcome back, 21. Standing with indigenous rights activist Winona LaDuke after receiving the Oshkitigidid, I'm butchering that, I'm sorry. She received this new gardener award at the Indigenous Farming Conference in 2015. She claimed to be of Mohawk and Mi'kmaq descent, whose tribes were native to the northeastern part of the U.S. and Canada. Hoover said she always identified herself as someone of mixed Mohawk, Mi'kmaq, French, English, Irish, and German descent and identity. You're getting ready for college. Good luck with that. I hope you have a good day. I just... Like, at this point in the U.S., unless, like, unless, like, your parents are immigrants, you're white, you're white. Like, it's a country of immigrants. Yes, we all have relatives that came here hundreds of years ago. We're all just white at this point. Like, fuck's sake. She detailed how she grew up with the belief that her great-grandmother was a Mohawk woman and was brought to powwow ceremonies and food summits to feel connected to her mother's family background. What the fuck? Hoover said she faced many accusations regarding her heritage throughout her career as a professor at Elizabethtown College, St. Olaf College and Brown University. Okay, and she didn't find any of that to be weird. Have a great day at college. I hope everything goes wonderfully. Following the apology, this Adrian Keene, an assistant professor at Brown University and a Cherokee Nation citizen, said she used to be friends with Hoover. She wrote a letter on her own blog saying Hoover's story quickly fell apart when Keene first started looking into it over a year ago. They estimate how recently your ancestors may have come over. 23 and Me, like that stuff, it's so like, if you have not already done it, do not do it. (laughs) Do not do it. I forget, who was it that recently bought 23 and Me? Yes, 23andMe recently sold genetic data from 5 million customers to giant pharmaceutical company GlaxoSmithKline. This surprised a lot of their users who forgot that they consented to this when they signed up for the service. Y'all, do not use those websites. Do not send your DNA off. Don't do it. Bodily autonomy is a thing, okay? Yes, there's also MyHeritage, Ancestry.com. They're all connected. All of those websites are connected. Don't use them. If you have not sent your DNA off, don't fucking do that shit. I have quite a few friends who work in genetics in their jobs, and they all have said, stay the fuck away from those websites. And then shit like this happens. Like, not even once. Just don't do it. In Latin America, it's hard to trace which tribe. Eh, that's fair. That's fair. This, oh, so the lady who started looking into this professor, she said, this work was not particularly difficult, nor did it require a lot of specialized knowledge. Her story fell apart within a few clicks. 
but the following months were spent trying every avenue to find something that would explain her claims, triangulating and triple checking, looking in new databases, finding more and new documents, or going back another generation. A petition demanding Hoover's resignation received over 350 signatures. It became compulsory eventually. Hello. The world is terrifying these days. What, like, I don't even want to think about that. I just hope that I will be able to, like, get out and go to Canada or something. I had to stop watching The Handmaiden's Tale because it's too real and it was... No. I was just triggered the whole time watching it. I made it through, I don't know, I don't even remember what season I stopped in, but it was pre-pandemic. I might have stopped, I stopped at whatever season she was helping people leave and then she got shot. That's the last I watched and I just, that might have been the last one pre-Panini, I don't remember. But I had to stop because it, that show is too realistic. <laughs> Hoover went on to say her false claims did not just hurt Native communities she claimed to be a part of, but also the students she taught while she researched her specializations of Native American food systems, Native American environmental health movements, and indigenous uses of fire. Wow. She acknowledged her apology was long overdue and wouldn't accomplish much, but she was adamant that it could be a stepping stone for change and to help her make amends. Wow. So, I don't know that... If she's gonna... Yes, that is what... That is what Dalizel did after that. I wonder what she's up to these days. Oh, she has a YouTube channel. Oh, God. March 21st of this year. Let's see. Attended Arizona hair discrimination event. Joined the Arizona governor last week for a signing of an executive order that bans state agencies and contractors from practicing race-based hair discrimination. Did she have an OnlyFans too? Did she? You never know what's real anymore. Oh, Rachel Dalizal, who now goes by the name Nkechi Amari Diallo. The fuck? Mostly feet pics. Oh, dear. 2015. Wow. What a lifetime ago, huh? Yes, her parents outed her. <laughs> she moved to Tucson in 2020. But yes, Delizel's presence undercut the impact of the executive order, which was meant to combat racism that Black people encounter when they wear their hair in braids, locks, twists, nods, and head wraps. It does put a damper on what should have been a positive day. Why did the governor allow that? Oh, the, the governor shared a group photo that did not include Delizel, but Delizel showed, tweeted pics showing she was on the floor. Good God. Prof, good night. Good night. It was good to see you. Um, yeah, we'll see you Tuesday or Wednesday. A spokesperson says the administration invited advocacy organizations from across the state and they believe Deliza was there because she was volunteering for one of those groups under a different name. Hmm. We should not allow a person who is known for misrepresenting herself take away from the work that went into this action. I mean, fair. What? Um, story time immediately, Crowbar. Oh, 
three? Okay, you need to story immediately. Make Netflix. Did Netflix do a thing on her? Yeah, I know she I know she's from Spokane and she became the like the leader of the Spokane NAACP. That was like where the whole thing exploded in the first place. But like just because you both live in the same very large city doesn't mean you're gonna meet or get bitten. So I'm gonna need we're, come on, get rolling. <laughs> um Oh, wait, 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 wait. So Rachel Evita Saraswati is a different person. Two Rachels, different people. Rachel Evita Saraswati is the, was the Chief Equity, Inclusion, and Culture Officer of Social Justice Organization American Friends Service Committee. She, complained to be, she claimed to be a woman of color of Latina, South Asian, and Arab descent, but her mother told The Intercept she is not. There is an open letter from her peers questioning her background. <laughs> You're subbing in a Head Start classroom. Morning class was more special needs. He got enrolled. He was or is highly nonverbal. Okay. One day he bit you. Where did he bite you? Okay, at first glance, this lady's face gives big X Tina Circle 2002. Anybody else getting that? Almost all ethnicities roll in one. Right. So she went for the let me claim all of these. So then when people are like, oh, you don't look like X, Y, or Z, I can just be like, it's because I'm all of them. And then she just has to be vaguely exotic looking. Um, respecting people's self-identities implies something rather minimal. Yeah, transracial isn't a thing. That's just not a thing. I don't know if it was her hand or the one that slammed his head into her stomach a bit. Oh, yeah one of those are you still in a teaching profession <laughs> yes the very idea of being able to transition to a different race discredits trans and gender diverse people's experience of gender affirmation it also undermines the importance of cultural connections for many communities Right? Like, why do people lie about race? Maybe they're selfish, like people who claim indigenous roots for some type of material gain associated with that identity. Or maybe they're just a pathological liar. Or maybe they feel guilty about their whiteness. Good night, Quad. Thanks for hanging out. I hope we'll see you again next week. In some cases, it could be career-driven. If you're perceived as a minority and want to work for a minority-led organization, it could make you appear more qualified. Gross. Religious identities like Islam are sometimes tied to a racial identity, too. Yikes. On bikes. And in other cases, it could be family lore spun out of control. Like, like Elizabeth Hoover at UC Berkeley.
Yes, this. This is exactly what happened with the lady at UC Berkeley. Those who identify with indigenous races but aren't actually of that descent may be mistakenly seeking community. And yeah, it is, I, I am with the people who believe that it's inherently racist and exploitive exploitative uh, i'm i'm with that group when people who are white and have all the privileges white uh, privileges of whiteness their entire lives think they can dip in or play another race when it's to their benefit yes that is a blatant example of white privilege that's gross Her son was born after her expulsion, his name was Langston, to having a black identity. The only famous person by that name that I know of is, that I can think of is Langston Hughes, and all I know is the name. I don't know who they are or what they did. I want to say Langston Hughes was a writer, but I don't know. Brad Pitt and and Ju Julia Lewis were a thing? I didn't know that. <clears throat> Rachel DeLiesel has a documentary and her son isn't happy. Oh, it came out. Uh, gross. It came out in 2019. Okay. Author, poet, 1930s Harlem Renaissance. Oh, uh, okay. That sounds right. That sounds right. And yes, what you said makes sense. In the trailer, her son says, I resent them for choices, and I resent some of the words she's spoken in interviews. She can identify whatever she wants because it's her business, but when it's put in the limelight, I don't think you should be pissing people off more than they already are. Fair enough. Anyway. Oh, so the governor published this picture, which is cropped a bit. Or maybe that's just part of Rachel DeLiesel's own picture. <sighs> Dying of laughter, right? Mm. So... Like, she's basically still doing that shit, and so she changed her name so she can fly under the radar? Is that basically what we're gathering from this? Oh, she had two older sons in the next time. Oh, okay, okay. In 2017, so two years after the scandal... She changed her name to Nkechi Amari Diallo because she said she was unemployable at the Liesel. I can't imagine why. Fuck's sake. Changing her name to Nkechi Amari Diallo. A West African way of saying gift from the gods. Fuck's sake. This woman can't. She got cropped like someone's ex with the pictures. She really did. She really did. Um, yeah, she was outed by her lily white parents and just declared herself transracial, then said she's really black, not white, and then went on to get a book deal and a Netflix deal. Like, she will never fucking stop. I fucking hate it. Wow, it's unknown how Dalizel managed to still center stage from the governor, 
who has twice been found guilty by juries of discriminating against a black staff member of the Arizona legislature. Wow. What? You are my hero's excuse? Mm -mm. Yes, I have seen them before. She's very white. Very white. I feel like she spent a lot of time in tanning beds or has a lot of stealth tanner or something. Ow. I'll just like have a second where everything like spun for a moment. Ugh. Weird. Yes, she was very white. Oh, yes, they are mentioning this lady. Um, of course, she got a plea deal. Fuck's sake. She's white, very. Capital Y, capital T. Here we go, perfect. Like, girl, you white. Oh yeah, and then there's this one. Oh no, that's where she was already in it. Like, girl, you white. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god, I fucking hate it so much. Raise fundamental questions about identity. Oh my god. Anyway, um, yeah. Do we need a cleanser? How do we cleanse from this? My head hurts now. Where? The fish cam doesn't work, remember? Oh. I hope I didn't have like a mini stroke or something. Shit. We're going to the brain bleach. Duckling's first swim? She swam back one. <laughs> They're so cute. Precious little babies. Jumping off for a little swim with their mom. Adorable. Yeah, bombs away. Oh my gosh. Blurry picture of a cat. Aw, little kitty. Wow, this bird is covered in cats. It's so nice and warm in the dryer. Why do cats love sitting in the dryer? Why is that a thing? Little kitties and scarves. That is so nice. Okay, brain bleach? Is it eye bleach? Like... Maybe it's eye bleach? 
Oh, it is eye bleach. Yeah, this is the big one. Oh, what a beautiful kitty. What an absolutely beautiful boy. That is a, yeah, that's a supermodel. Oh. Is this that cat's mom? Wow. Look at this beautiful cat. I just need someone else to acknowledge how absolutely beautiful this cat is. I need to, like, turn off the lights. He's so handsome and just the right amount of floof. What? How is that real? These are all just excellent. Toby and Freckles. <gasps> Toby and Freckles is interesting. This one, maybe. He's kind of more blonde than orange, though. I'm just going all the lights off. Because, yeah. Ow. Um, tiny little turtle. Oh, wow. Well, that's a lovely bird. Ow. So nobody else has experienced this, like, thing that just happened in my brain? Like, I was just sitting here, and then everything, like half spun for like a split hundredth of a second and my brain like aches i don't know what vertigo feels like not lightheaded no it wasn't like that I'm pretty sure I'm not dehydrated. Yeah, I usually get a brain ache like this either. That's weird. What even? Um, I think it's kind of the whole thing, but I think, I feel like maybe it's more like towards the back. It was just like, like, a quick glitch. This cat is broken. This, um, out of, out of order. Ow. Wow. I guess this is just a dog and cat subreddit. Well, yes, if anything else happens or anything, yes. It is a very good point, Pillow. Thank you. <gasps> Chains come running. Oh, look at the girls run. That's so wholesome. 
I love it. Look at them. They just run up. You're home, you're home, you're home. Yeah. Oh, lambs. Oh, goodness. They're so cute and little. Are they just kind of standing there though? I think they're kind of just standing there. Is there, like, okay, the subreddit used to be more than just dogs and cats. It had, like, other cute animals. Wow. <gasps> Remember? Remember the sexy lizard lady? One sec. Okay, for those who don't know, this is throwback to summer 2021. Oh, that's a video. One sec. Um, is that just, oh, media source, here we go. Oh, I was in the folder and then I closed it. Here we go. Yeah, ah, oh, wait. Where did I go? Properties, yes. This is the sexy lizard lady. I mean, the resemblance is uncanny. I don't know why it keeps glitching like that. Local playback, yes, do it. Blast from the past, it really is. Super annoying that it keeps doing that. Ew. I just want other non-dog cat animal. Anyway. Okay, I guess I'll go to bed in a few minutes. I have to go downstairs and get down and go to bed, but... In a few minutes. I'm going to have some cannabis product and then do that. Okay, let's see. Mm 
All right, here's a raid. We're gonna go see some kittens. There are some feral cat siblings, I guess. I'll be back uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. I hope to see you then. <gasps> oops, I just dumped out all of this. Oops, oops, oops. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. I hope you all have a nice sleep and a great day tomorrow. All right, good night.